Hey guys, welcome back to Pop 'em Up Chem. In this video, which is going to be the last of Unit 6 and 16, we're going to be looking at activation energy in a little bit more depth than we have before. We're going to look at the Arrhenaeus equation and how that leads us to be able to calculate activation energy graphically. So, little paper one question on reaction mechanisms to cover what was in the last video. Pause the video and have a go at that one. Hopefully you remembered that we have to look for the slow step so we can write our rate as equal to K times all the reactants of the slow step. We just need to double check this P2 molecule here is of course an intermediate. So we go back to the first step of the reaction and we see that the overall rate equation is going to be rate equals K times P squared times Q. So mind in our P's and Q's and P is second order, Q is first order, so the answer is C. So to go about this, we want to have a deeper think about the rate constant and what the rate constant really is. Now we can express the rate constant kind of as a function of collision theory, right? We have a certain amount of particles that are going to have the correct orientation. A certain amount of particles are going to have the correct energy and a certain amount of particles are going to collide. Well, this expression, K equals P times Z times E to the power EA over RT, relates all those. P here is representing a steric factor or the fraction of collisions with the correct orientation. Z represents the number of collisions. E is, of course, the base of natural logarithms. EA, the activation energy. R is the universal gas constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin. We can simplify that a little bit by thinking about P and Z as a term together called A as the frequency factor. Yeah, the number of collisions that have correct orientation. Now remember activation energy is the energy that is required to break the bonds that allow a reaction to begin and the amount of energy that particles require to overcome the mutual repulsion of their electron shells. That expression that we have left is the Arrhenaeus equation, K equals A multiplied by E to the power of minus EA over RT. This equation is really useful if we take natural logarithms of both sides, we end up with ln K equals ln A minus EA over RT and may not be immediately obvious but if we rearrange that equation we can actually get it in the form of a linear equation of Y equals M MX plus C ln K equals EA over R times 1 over T multiplied by ln A. The reason that's so powerful is now we know there's going to be a straight line somewhere that has the gradient of minus EA over R, and that means we're going to be able to calculate our activation energy from that line. And for exam situations, all of these are given in the data booklet in table one. So how do we go about determining activation energy experimentally? As I mentioned, we're going to need a graph to get that linear line from and the graph we need is 1 over t on the x-axis and ln k on the y-axis y equals mx plus c this indicates that the y-intercept would be the value of ln a which doesn't really have much use for us but it also means that the gradient of the slope of this line is equal to negative activation energy over the universal gas constant now, the way we go about actually doing this is by measuring the rate of reaction at different temperatures where we keep all the concentrations the same. And then at those temperatures, calculating the value of K, the rate constant. Then once we have the value of K at those different temperatures, we then take ln of those values of K and one over T, the temperature. And then once we've got that, we can then make this the Arrhenaeus plot ln k over 1 over t. So let's have a go at processing a set of data. So the first thing we're going to want to do, and we're going to want to do kind of four steps in every 
situation is we're going to want to adjust the values to ln k and to 1 over t. The second thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually plot the graph. The third thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find the gradient of that graph. The fourth thing we're going to want to do is from that gradient calculate the activation energy. So taking that data and processing it on Excel, I was able to produce a graph that looked like this. One thing to bear in mind is I've kept the times 10 to the power three on the one over T just to make the graph look a little nicer, but I'll show you how to alter that in the processing. So we've got our equation to the line and because of that, we've got our gradient. So we know our gradient is minus 6.0184. And we know also that the gradient is equal to negative EA divided by R. So we know that negative 6.0184 is equal to that. Now I'm also going to account for the fact that I'd multiplied the values of one over T by 1000. So I'm going to divide through by a thousand on my gradient value and that's gonna give me 6,018 multiplied by 8.31 is equal to my EA, which gives me the answer in joules per mole. Now, I'm gonna give the answer in kilojoules per mole, which is standard for activation energy. So the answer is 49.93 kilojoules per mole. Let's do a couple of questions then before we finish up. First question, what needs to be measured in order to collect data to calculate the activation energy? Pause the video. Pop them up! So of course we need to measure the rate of reaction while changing the temperature. So measuring the rate of reaction at different temperatures. And then from that, we're going to be able to process that rate of reaction data to be able to calculate the rate constant at each temperature. So next question, how can activation energy be found from a graph of ln k versus one over t? Pause the video. Pop them up. So once we've got that graph, we can plot the linear plot, ln k one over t, and the gradient of that line is going to be equal to the negative Ea over r, so therefore, the activation energy is going to be equal to negative the slope multiplied by the universal gas constant. As usual, there are some questions to practice the calculation of activation energy and some practical workbook questions for the practical will do. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. And as always, practice makes slightly better.